Hove, England, 2008. In the middle of the night, 20-year-old Charmaine de Rosario Sage is sleeping in bed when she awakens to a frightening sight, a reptilian humanoid staring down at her. A reptilian came into the room. We went to an underground cave. There was a group of reptilians there, and they stood around me in a circle. Each one of them put one hand on my body, and I slowly changed. And it was the most amazing, but also sort of bizarre situation to, to look down at your body and see it morph from your human form into a reptilian form, to see the skin shift from being smooth into scales and to find that I had a tail. Could Charmaine's incredible story be true? Was she really transformed into a reptilian human hybrid? Charmaine claims she learned from her abductors that all humans today are byproducts of alien genetic manipulation, some more than others. At certain points in our history, different ET races have come to this planet, and they have not manipulated all of humanity, but certain groups. The reason and agenda for alien intelligences to be on this planet manipulating humans and animals is because there are wars out there between different types of intelligences about territory and that those territorial wars involve populations of created and manipulated life. If reptilian extraterrestrials have inhabited Earth for thousands of years, are they content to continue hiding out underground? Or is the day fast approaching where they will step out of the shadows and announce their presence once again? Christians are waiting for the return of Jesus. The Jews are waiting for the return of the Messiah. The Islamic community is waiting for the return of Muhammad. The idea of this return did not originate with any of those religious figures, but it in fact originated with the promise by extraterrestrials that they would return in the future. Tradition tells us that the army of the Messiah is not to come from heaven, but is to arise from inner earth and therefore dominate the surface world. Perhaps we are now at this special turning point in, in our history and the timeline of planet Earth where the reptilians and the other extraterrestrials will announce themselves. Could evidence of secret underground cities, combined with recent accounts of encounters with so-called reptilian creatures, be preparing us to accept a profoundly different genetic truth than the one we have been taught? That mankind didn't only evolve from a race of primates, but also from a race of reptiles, whose genes were spliced into our own by means of extraterrestrial manipulation. Sierra Leone, Africa, the early 1990s. As civil war rages across the country, rebels begin forcing villagers to mine so-called blood diamonds. But from deep within the earth emerges a vast treasure they weren't expecting. They discover mysterious figures ranging from five to 10 inches tall often with reptilian or amphibian features, known as nomaly. They're very strange statues. Some are clay, some are of granite or limestone. They are humans and human figures with lizard heads. There are hundreds of them. According to legend, the nomaly represent sky gods. When they fell from the heaven, part of the sky turned to stone and rained down with them. Curiously, 
strange blue stones can be found buried with many of the Nomali figurines. These strange blue stones called sky stones have been found with the statues. And at first, archeologists thought, okay, it's just blue stones. But when they analyzed it, they couldn't figure out how these had been made too. Although the people in Sierra Leone felt that they were actually pieces of the blue sky that fell with the Nomali. If these mysterious blue stones are really connected to the legend of the sky turning to stone and raining down on the earth with the arrival of the Nomali, what could they be? Seattle, Washington, March 6th, 2019. In search of further evidence that the Nomali statues may have an extraterrestrial connection, ancient astronaut theorist David Childress has arranged to meet up with Skystone collector and researcher Jared Collins. Wow. Jared has in his possession a number of the mysterious blue stones that were found near the statues. So how was it that these stones were actually discovered in modern times? This was actually discovered in 1991 by a man named David Ledbetter. He was in Sierra Leone on a mining concession looking for gold and diamonds. And when he was having his crew dig, occasionally these stones would appear. What do other geologists say about stones like this? Are they able to identify them? We've sent these now to 12 different labs. There is not one piece of consensus in here. Everybody has a different opinion. We still don't know, actually, if these are natural or man-made. So maybe it's from another planet. I don't know. I really wish I did, and I would love a chance to actually be able to get this in front of somebody else who could look at it again. I've got some friends at the University of Washington, and I think we can set this up and have another test done. That would be fantastic. I would love to get some consensus on this to understand what this actually is. While tests conducted on the stones found with anomaly statues have so far produced conflicting and sometimes even confounding results, David is eager to have them tested for himself. At the University of Washington, David and Jared meet with renowned geologist, Professor Peter Ward. Hi, I'm David Childress. David? I talked to you on the phone. Uh, it's good to meet you. And this is Jared Collins. Thank you so much for seeing us today. Jared, both of you guys, welcome to the University of Washington ISO Lab. So what do we have in this beautiful box? Well, we're sort of hoping that you can tell us. Well, 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 what are these beauties? We have been through many tests on these, and no one can identify them. They cannot tell us whether these are natural or artificial, what's causing the blue color, if this is ancient or modern. So they've been checked for the common blue minerals, I take it. One thing that we know for sure is that this is not turquoise, this is not lapis, this is not aronite. The fact that it's so unbelievably light really suggests that there's an organic component to it. Anything that goes blue generally is much heavier. So this is, this is really a mystery. I should mention also that this only comes from one very specific part, from one very specific village. It has never been found anywhere else in the world. Well, let's do a test that removes any doubt about them being partly organic. So Erin is gonna take this rock and she's gonna scrape it into these tiny little tin cups. The tin cups themselves will load into our mass spectrograph. They will then be heated to 1,000 degrees centigrade. Everything inside will combust and turn to gas. And those individual gas molecules will then be sampled, and we can examine if there are any truly organic molecules in this rock. Was there some life process that was involved in its formation? David and Jared return home to wait for the results. When Dr. Ward receives them two weeks later, he sends an email to David remarking that what the scientists found was so strange, they ran the test three times thinking it was a machine error and added, this gives me the creeps. To learn more, David contacted Dr. Ward through video chat. Hi, Dr. Ward. So I wanted to learn about the results. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was much stranger than we thought. There really seems to be some sort of organic aspect to this. 
it's got element nitrogen in it in really high concentrations. Having this high amount of nitrogen puts it into a, wow, that's a very peculiar rock category. We were looking for a possible extraterrestrial origin. Is it possibly a meteorite or even part of a spaceship that exploded? <laughs> uh, let's just say that there's a possibility that it came from off the Earth. As we sign to say, it's worth more study. Houston, Texas, 2010. Doctors at the Texas Heart Institute examine a 59-year-old man complaining of chest pains and make an astounding discovery. The patient has a three-chambered heart, similar to that of a reptile. Researchers attributed the rare condition to an evolutionary phenomenon called atavism. When a lost trait of a distant ancestor reemerges in a modern organism. So the idea is if you look at where we evolved from, we were first fish. Fish have a two-chambered heart. And then we came on land, we're more like a reptile that has a three-chambered heart. And then eventually the four-chambered heart as we became mammals and then humans. So interestingly, during development, that same sequence of evolution is played out again as embryos. So if there's any sort of defect in the embryo along the way, it could get stalled out at that earlier state. And now this man has a heart that's more typical of our distant ancestors, the reptiles. While the discovery of a human with a reptilian heart is incredibly rare, other genetic conditions have been found that suggest a link with reptiles. Since the 1800s, over 100 cases of human tails have been reported in medical journals. People with the disease ichthyosis have dry, scaly skin. But if such anatomical irregularities are a link to our ancient ancestors, as some scientists suggest, could it be that they are not the remnants of a reptilian stage in human development, but instead reveal that the human genome was commingled with that of the so-called reptilians. Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and believe that proof of alien hybrid experimentation can also be found in other unusual anomalies that appear to mirror the descriptions of divine beings from ancient texts. Within us is the whole evolutionary development of humankind, as well as the other species that humans developed from reptiles, fish, and so forth. Extrapolating this idea, if extraterrestrials had a hand in retooling our DNA, then do we also carry their genetic makeup within us, as we would? We know today that our DNA contains a lot of junk DNA that we still don't understand. So when we see these genetic anomalies surface in physical form in children, it could be that it's not an anomaly, it's actually a lost extraterrestrial gene, a marker that's now resurfacing at the right time. Could there be extraterrestrial genes lying dormant in human DNA, as ancient astronaut theorists suggest? And if so, might a closer examination of bloodlines passed down from our earliest ancestors provide further evidence of this connection? Located between the border of Spain and France is the Pyrenees mountain range. The people that occupy this isolated region are known as the Basque, and they have long confounded anthropologists and historians. The language spoken by the enclave is not related to any other in that part of the world. And the population also has the highest concentration of Rh negative blood type on Earth. Up to 35% of Basque people have Rh negative blood. And Rh negative blood is one of the most unusual blood types. And it's the one blood type that is least likely to mutate or interact with other blood types. Human blood types 
are grouped into four distinct designations that include O, A, B, and AB. Additionally, there is another variance between blood types known as the Rh factor, or rhesus factor, which is a measure of rhesus-based antigens in the blood. The name comes from a monkey from India and other parts of Asia, which is the rhesus macaque. And this monkey was used in experiments looking at blood transfusions. How blood was received from recipients varied. And it was discovered that the rhesus factor could be positive or negative. Most humans in the world are rhesus positive. Eighty-five percent of humans in the world are Rh positive and have no issues receiving blood from positive or negative donors. But for the Rh negative population, receiving Rh positive blood may be fatal, as the body will try to destroy the foreign antigens. And for women that are Rh negative, mating with an Rh positive partner could be detrimental to the fetus. If a rhesus positive and a rhesus negative uh, parents were to have an offspring, there is a potential danger to the offspring because these two blood types can't interbreed, basically. Medical intervention is needed. It's why, actually, in the past, people had to have a blood test before they were allowed to get married. The very fact that an Rh negative mother, her body would actually try to kill an Rh positive baby generates bizarre scenarios. How on earth could this happen? It suggests somewhere in our lineage that the Rh negatives and the Rh positives are perceived as being profoundly different. And also, studies of Rh negatives suggest that they have lower than normal blood pressure lower than normal pulse. In a number of cases, they have an extra vertebra in their back. Rh negative is very rare. Most of the world didn't have it until colonization started in the 15th century. Rh negative didn't exist in the Americas, that it didn't exist in, in Southern Africa, it didn't exist in Asia. It was only in Europe, so it spread out from there. Out of Africa, that theory has it that all human beings originated in Africa, southern Africa, sub-Sahara. They're all Rh positive. They don't have any Rh negative. Where did Rh negative evolve then? 15% of the humans have Rh negative blood. 15%. And scientists have no idea where it came from. What they do believe is that if you have that, you may have been evolved from a different kind of species on this planet. Now, was that species put here, genetically altered, or was it just a natural formation of the planet in its evolutionary stage? Who knows, but the fact is that RH negative people, and again, there's 15% of them on this planet, may have come from outside sources.